Now let's start talking about actually doing some airbrush painting. You already understand that you push down, you get air, no paint, you pull back, and paint comes out. Those are the basic skills that you're going to need to learn. And like any other skill, it comes with practice. And I want to give you a couple exercises. Skills develop through exercise. And uh, this first one I'm going to do on a, on a vertical easel. I'm just going to draw several lines, horizontal and vertical. And uh, while I'm talking about something vertical, let me let you know that it's perfectly permissible to airbrush on a table down like this or upright. I, my guess is that most people that do the freehand airbrushing, like t-shirts and automotive, most of them work vertical. But uh, those of us who do a lot of frisket cutting and real fine work probably tend to work horizontal more. But either one is perfectly admissible. I have some green paint in this Iwata airbrush. What I'm going to try to do is target practice. I'm going to try to hit a dot of color right at every one of those line intersections. Now that might sound easy to you, but I'm going to try to do it without, without cheating. Well, let me show you how, how you cheat. Is you, you've got some air coming out and then a little bit of paint. And <laughs> see, that was really bad. Not only did I cheat, I even did cheating bad understand because I missed the target completely that wasn't so bad but I want to come in even closer and try to hit right at the intersection of each of these lines I'm doing pretty good that one's not so great that one wasn't perfect now you'd need to zoom in really, really tight, and I don't know if you can get that close to see how I'm doing, but you got the idea. I mean, I don't even want to be off a 32nd of an inch. If I can help it, I want to be dead on. That's the bullseye. And it takes some practice to get to where you can do a bullseye. Now, the first time you pick up an airbrush, you'll probably want to do something like this. Just, just start drawing, painting lines. Nothing wrong with that. That'll boost your confidence. It'll, it's fun. You know, you can, you can write your name. You can write your girlfriend's name. You can write your dog's name. You can have fun doing all kinds of stuff. You start doing, you know, squiggles, ooh, the sunrise, and so on and so forth. Just start playing around with it, with it like that. Don't get too cocky, though, because this, you might feel like you're doing a really good job. <laughs> it'll, it'll get harder real quick. For instance, it's so easy to do this, but what if I were to draw with a pencil again, what if I were to draw a curve like this and say, okay, now I want to hit that line. Do you see the difference? It's one thing to go like this. It's quite another to lay a line right on top of that. And this is what you need to be able to do to, to develop skill with the airbrush. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do that right here. you're going to find out just how good and how bad I am all at the same time. Now I already, I've already mentioned to you at the beginning, just in case you forgot it, that if I weren't on camera right now, I'd be wearing a, I'd be wearing a respirator, okay? You do the same thing, I'd be wearing a mask so I wouldn't be inhaling any of this. That's not too bad, but it's a little bit wiggly and squiggly, isn't it? It's not, it's not going to win me any awards, that's for sure. So, but it comes with practice. If you do it every day, you'll get really good. You can nail that down. Um, back to my grid. The next thing you might practice is drawing a straight line along those lines. Let me demonstrate again. Hitting that line is kind of hard. If I just want to do a straight line, see, that one's straighter, but I, didn't, I wasn't trying to hit a line. Do you understand the difference? This is just practice, just skill building. And then, of course, you want to be able to do the same thing with vertical lines. Up and down. And it's this kind of thing that, again, my hat's off to the, the guys that do the t-shirts at the, at the beach or at the fair. They really de de develop some amazing skill. Um, let's go on to a, another basic, basic skill, which would be a blended area. Let's say I'm going to take one of these squares right here. 
so I'm giving myself some d very definite parameters and I want to blend from dark over here to light. So I come in very close to the board to begin my dark area. Then little by little, I pull back on my trigger, releasing more paint. And I, at the same time, I pull the airbrush back further from the board. Okay, now so far that's really bad. You understand that? And freehand is is a challenge to do that. Let me let me show you how you do that. If you if you were really going to do a square like that, let me show you the easy way, just so I don't freak you out too much. I'm going to come back and fix this, but before I do that, I want to show you if you really want to do a square and do a gradation in it, then use some kind of mask. I'm using sticky notes here, and in about two or three seconds, voila, see they're a pretty good blend. But here I'm trying to do it without any mask whatsoever. Do you see the difference? So now I've got, I've got little light areas and dark areas in here, and so I need to come in very carefully. Now I'm back to target practicing. Because I need to, the areas that are too light, I need to hit them with an airbrush. If you've done any airbrushing before, you know exactly what I'm doing, you know how it feels, you know the, the problems that come up and so on and so forth. I'm going to stop there. I would go on trying to get this more and more perfect. Let me say again that I'm using transparent paint, t uh, paint right now and that makes a really big difference. Opaque is easier to work with. There's, it's more forgiving. Uh, for one thing, if it's opaque, once you get to 100% coverage, it can't get any darker than that. Does that make sense to you? I demonstrated that a while ago on that little paint chip that I, that I painted the end of. Uh, so opaque is a little bit more forgiving when you're doing a blend. Transparent, the more you put on there, see, the darker it gets. And every little wiggle and jiggle shows up. But it's really, really, really good for practice. Let me see, what else do I want you to, to practice to develop skill? One would be starting, let's, let me use this line right here, starting really close to the board, fine line. And getting bigger. That's one skill you want to try. The other is perhaps more challenging, starting big. and ending small. You got the idea? Now I'm just making a page full of messes here, but because you know what I'm trying to do, you understand the value of it. So there are all kinds of exercises you can do. I'm going to talk a lot more about masking, uh, covering up, using handheld masks, using cut masks, but this exercise, these kinds of exercises are a great way to get started at developing some skill. You might want to take a few minutes and try it right now.